but most of the time people try to fix their problems couples try to fix their problems on their own and they're so afraid of what's going to come out in therapy that could actually make their issues worse so therapy is a very dicey thing and I do well, since we're on the topic of family and relationship counseling I, I definitely have to say this because this has been weighing on my mind for a long time there's a lot of counselors out there that are absolutely not qualified or certified or trained to do relationship counseling. Relationship counseling is extremely tricky business. And if it's not done correctly, okay, your problems can get worse, not better. All right, there's a, there's a lot that goes into So just because uh, someone says that they do relationship counseling doesn't mean that they're necessarily trained because they can put two people in a room and have them talk to each other. That's not, that's not relationship counseling. Well, I, I had an example of that. Someone that I know went to see another person for the couple's counseling. I was seeing that person individually. And the therapist there had told this person to, you know, stop focusing on that because you're going to push your partner away. Yeah, but he was sitting with these issues. He had to focus on it. So what do you do? Just stop it? You can't do that. Suppress someone and think it's going to get better to do that. It was... Uh, There's a fancy term, and you know this uh, in counseling. It's called homeostasis. And it, that's really what the balance is of the relationship. Now, people have to understand as much as they want to blame somebody else, their partner, for the problems of the relationship or the way that the relationship is, somehow that relationship has formed a certain way over the years uh, given the experiences of each person and the way that the relationships come together. So when a person comes to therapy in there, the way that their relationship is at that moment is the way that their whole system has just found, that's the balance, the, the, the balance of that, uh, that system. So when no matter what we try to do, okay, there's going to be a tendency for that system to try to go back to what they know. And this is the job of the, the relationship counselor, a really good relationship counselor, will help to bring the whole relationship to a different level and help keep it there. Not go there for a little while or a day or a couple of hours and then boom, you're right back to where you were. See, that's why I have a problem with simple exercises. To just do a simple little exercise and, and that's going to make it all better. You know? So uh, this is such a big topic and just important for people to realize how important it is to have a qualified therapist and do the work, spend the time to break through some of those issues. And they're not just based on the relationship now, it's your family, your upbringing, it's everything. Everything. That plays into everything. Money, everything. That's so this is really interesting. I did have I did have a patient that uh, had come in and she had, um, there was infidelity in, in the marriage that she had discovered. And now, you know, with the technology, uh, men and women are using technology to figure out the truth. So there are spy equipment and all of this stuff that they didn't even add years ago. And people need to be aware of that. So uh, this particular patient ha had been discovering that her husband had been involved in suspicious activity. And she had been married for a very long time. And uh, obviously, you know, loved her husband, was very committed to him, wanted to keep, keep the relationship together. And um, she was extremely distraught. And what, what this discovery had brought about for her, she wanted to get divorced but wasn't physically able to do it, sign the paperwork. Um, what it brought back all of her traumas from her, uh, from her life before, things that happened when she was young. Um, it made her discover um, how she, she had lost her voice, she had lost herself. And she really realized that she needed to, it was time for her to get stronger within herself. So she came to see me, you know, for an initial assessment and I evaluated everything, the relationship, her, 
And I told her all of the things within her that I could help her to heal. But that if I healed those areas and that she became a stronger person, there was a very good chance that she would not want to be in this relationship anymore. And um, if that was the case, that I could help her have the strength to, you know, to, to make that move. But she had to understand that if she did the hard work on herself, she was either going to go this way or this way. Her life was going to be the same, the same as she, she knew it if she didn't make the change. Or she was going to be able to heal herself, make these changes, and her life was going to be different. And she opted to, to make those changes. Um, I also actually, uh, something more recently that I have been doing sometimes is I recommended a lie detector test. Um, I've had a couple of instances where I've recommended a lie detector test, and in this particular instance, I did. And the husband agreed to it. Um, even though he had completely denied his behaviors. I recommended the lie detector test. He did the lie detector test and he failed. He failed the lie detector test. And the lie detector test showed that he had had infidelity and he had all of, he had been, uh, had infidelity in, in his relationship. There were lies there. And you know what he did, Erica? He said, the lie, the, the lie detector test lied. It, it's wrong. And this particular patient, um, she always kind of felt her husband was a narcissist, but this, all information is good information. This brought to light for her that, that she wasn't wrong, that he was making her doubt herself all of that time about her accusations. And when she saw that piece of paper that said he was lying, she felt so validated. And um, she could really you know, it was like a reality check for her. Um, but the lie detector test has actually been something that I have been um, recommending um, from time to time. I did have a, another couple that would travel to see me, and uh, the wife was having, she was very, very symptomatic, I mean, to the point where she did absolutely nothing all day. She would sit in her room, look out the window, look at the garden, um, she would talk in word salad. I mean, if had she not seen me for therapy, she probably would have been institutionalized, maybe for the rest of her life. She was pretty much going into a psychotic mode. Um, one of her paranoias was that her husband was having affairs. And, you know, I was working with her individually on herself, um, but we would do couple sessions, and a lot of the couple sessions she was accusing him of these affairs. And I just sat there and I thought to myself, these two could go on and on for many, many years. It's kind of like a he said, she said. And this accusation of, I know you did this. I know you did this. And he's like, no, I didn't. She's like, yes, you did. No, I didn't. And so with them, I came up with the idea of recommending them for this lie detector. So he agreed to. He says, fine, I'll do the lie detector test. He did a lie detector test. And it comes back that he didn't lie. He was telling the truth. That it was her issue. It was her issue. But get this. She knew the results of the lie detector test. She comes into a session um, with him. And she says to him, I still know you lied. I, I had that experience with someone with a lie detector test, too. You're not, so not really believing the results of it. So that's amazing. So yeah. it's not it's not necessarily about couples have to understand that when they're fighting, there is the facts and then there is the reason behind the fights. And the reason behind the fights is not only it's not just because of what you think is fact. Sometimes couples are fighting because in reality they're not spending enough time together. They're feeling neglected. Their needs aren't being met. Um, they're spending too much time apart. And the fights are offering them, you know, like on a subconscious level, a way for them to bond with each other. Because while they're fighting, they're in the same room. You know? <laughs> and these are things that marriage and family therapists and people who are trained in relationships can kind of read between the lines of not just 
what are we talking about here, but what's the truth behind uh, the relationship dynamic? What is it that the couple really needs? 